This is a second example of a balance equation that we're going to solve. The first one we set up and solved a mass balance. Okay, that was our first video and I showed how to do this with um, uh, analytic solution but also with a couple different numerical solutions as well. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for this next example, but this is going to involve a species um, balance. Okay, so we're going to set up and solve a species balance. And so if we go to uh, just an overview of these equations that we're looking at, we're going to have um, use this equation right here um, for our species balance. And again, the where these come from are just a, a fundamental principle that the accumulation, or how much is inside a control volume, is going to be equal to the in minus the out plus generation minus consumption. Okay, so we apply that and uh, this becomes our species balance, or we're accumulating a certain number of moles or mass of, uh, of that species. We have our flow rate coming in, our flow rate going out, and then um, in terms of moles, you can have you know reaction that will either consume or generate uh, some additional moles. Now in the case of uh, mass, uh, a mass balance, or even a species uh, mass balance, that uh, you're not going to be generating or consuming mass, but you could generate or consume, if there's reaction, the mass of a particular species. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to um, to this problem, and so let's just let's just look at this one first of all, read through it, and then set up the balance equation, and then we'll solve it. Um, with a couple different techniques. So we have um, five gallons per minute coming in, and that's also going to be equal to uh, the amount going out. So we're going to hold constant here, uh, 100 gallons for this tank. But it starts off with, uh, this is going to be four um, pound mass of salt that's dissolved in this 100 gallons. Now uh, water is running in and out, um, so how much salt is going to be in the tank at 50 minutes into the future. And so we want to assume that the density of the salt solution is essentially that of pure water. Okay, and so let's go ahead and set up just a species uh, balance. Now this is going to be a, a mass balance. Okay, and I'll just do DMADT. The accumulation term is most always you know, the D of some quantity DT. In this case, it's going to be MA. Okay, and uh, that is going to be the mass flow rate um, coming in minus the mass flow rate uh, going out for that species. So this is going to be the, the salt. So this is going to be a zero, and um, then I'm going to break uh, this MA into two pieces. So we have XA times the mass that's in the tank, and then also our flow rate is going to be equal to uh, mole fraction uh, times the mass uh, mass flow rate coming out. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in uh, these two. And uh, the mass, we're going to say that's going to be constant. Um, and so we have dxa dt times our m. And then I have minus xa um, times m dot out. Okay, so uh, it just in, in terms of, uh, that's our, our balance. And what we want to do is, is go ahead and set this up now and solve it with a couple different uh, strategies. Let's go ahead and first of all just do separate and integrate. Okay, so if I separate and integrate, I'm just going to bring all of the, uh, the one variables onto one side. Okay, and that's going to be... Um, Move the DT over onto the other side. Bring the XA's over onto the left. Okay, and then I have M dot out divided by M times DT. I'll integrate that. Okay, and I'll start with a starting concentration and then a uh, final concentration as well. Okay, and then uh, I go from zero time, I need to put my negative in there, zero time to uh, final time. 
Okay, so integrating this, um, that's going to give me natural log of uh, final divided by the initial. Okay, and then um, this is going to be m out divided by m times t uh, minus zero. Okay, so um, at a time, we wanted to know at 50 minutes uh, what is going to be the concentration, so I'd plug in 50 minutes here. I would know the initial concentration, and so what would my final concentration be? Okay, so that was separate and integrate. Let's do Laplace as well. Okay, so Laplace transforms. Um, you know, I can do this with this same, just starting with this same uh, quantity right here. Um, this is going to be m times, and for this derivative term, I would need to go to Laplace tables. Okay, so this first one right here, uh, that's going to be my derivative term just from the Laplace tables. Okay, minus x, um, that's going to be my initial uh, value. Okay, and then that's going to equal, um, that's going to be uh, m dot out, and this uh, x a is a function of s. Okay, so in the Laplace domain. So I'm just going to go ahead and collect uh, terms and then solve for x. So I'm going to bring all of my x a terms onto the left hand side. So that's going to be m times s times x a. Okay, plus x a um, s times m dot out, okay, and that's going to equal um, m times x initial, um, <clears throat> I'll do this, x a initial, okay, let me change that to an a as well. Okay, so that's going to be our, our initial concentration, um, and I guess I, I use not there, let me change that to an i as well. Okay, and then I go ahead and collect the x a terms, factor that out, divide over the other part, um, and I have m s plus m dot out. Okay, so I have um, this form right here. I'm going to put it into, um, well, let me go ahead and just I'll leave it in this form. Let's see if we can find uh, a Laplace, inverse Laplace. Um, it'll take us back. Okay, so I have some here. This is 1 over s plus b, 1 over tau s plus 1. Uh, let's go ahead and get it into um, this form right here and then transfer it back um, to, to that form. So I, I need to have nothing in front of this s. Okay, so here in my uh, Laplace table. Um, so let me get back to the uh, 1 over s plus b. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just divide by m. Okay, and uh, so that is a, a 1 over s plus b. This is going to be my b term right here. So that's going to give me a solution of when I transfer it back into the time domain. That's going to be... Um, minus m dot out over m times t. Okay, so this gave me a solution which um, <clears throat> is equivalent to this solution if I just take the exponential of both sides and, uh, and I better put that as a as well. Okay, so same solution either with Laplace or with separate and integrate. So I want to show you also a third method which is Euler's method. Uh, I showed this in the previous example as well, but th in this way we can start with the original differential equation. So I'm just going to start with um, m dx a dt equals negative x a m dot out. In Euler's method, we're just going to give an initial concentration and uh, prescribe a delta t, a time differential uh, or time and then we want to try to compute what is going to be the value of x 
at the next value. And so we approximate the slope dxa dt as approximately equal to xa2 um, minus xa1 over delta t. Okay, and then just go ahead and plug in this approximation here and then just rearrange to solve for xa2. So that's going to be xa2 Okay, multiplying the dt over and dividing by the m. So that's going to be negative xa m dot out um, divided by m times dt or delta t. And then we're going to add the xa value from the prior step. Okay, so that's Euler's method. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we have an Excel sheet that shows um, Euler's method. Okay, so here's the numeric and analytic solution. Um, you know, column B is just Euler's method. And there you can see the equation up here that I just uh, wrote out. And then we have the analytic solution, either from Laplace or separate and integrate. Now if I change my uh, step size, maybe to two, instead you're gonna see the error grow. Okay, and if I go to, I'll just keep doubling that. <clears throat> and we'll see um, how much error is going to result. Okay, at a certain point it is going to go unstable. Okay, um, okay, so that's Euler's method. Um, okay, so let's go on to um, one other method. Now this is, we're going to do this one in MATLAB. And uh, we are going to integrate this um, differential equation. We're going to start with this just like we did with the Euler's, but we're going to let the MATLAB integrator actually do this uh, for us. Okay, so um, here is a model. Let me go ahead and just um, show the model for this. Okay, so I have um, a couple parameters. There's are my five. There's my, um, you know, 100 for my uh, total volume of my tank. Okay, now my concentration, I'm just gonna set that to four, okay? Even though that's, you know, it's gonna be four um, is uh, pounds of salt um, per gallon of uh, solution, okay? Um, per 100 gallons of, of solution, actually. Okay, so, uh, so actually that would need to be, let me just fix that. Um, that is a, uh, I guess it's a basis. I'll just leave it as four. Okay, you can change the initial conditions and see the answer, but there's my differential equation right there that I'm gonna be uh, solving. This is just editable with the text editor. Um, I use Notepad++, which is a free download. The other thing I needed to do is set up a time horizon. This one's just uh, a CSV file in Excel. And uh, in this case, I just put in some times where I wanna see the solution. Okay, and then, um, let me come back in here, um, example two. Okay, and then if I open this also with, you know, for example, a, um, a text editor, I'll see this just time with a couple uh, time values. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna open up MATLAB as well. So here's how I solve the, uh, numerically solve it with um, the MATLAB integrator. Here's uh, the analytic solution that we'd come up with. And then here is uh, just plotting the figure. So I'll go ahead and run it, and uh, and then we'll see the difference between the numeric and the analytic solution. Okay, so this is how to solve a species balance um, with uh, the, uh, these four different ways. Uh, we use separate and integrate or Laplace uh, transforms to get the solution. Now those are good uh, for simple systems. Uh, anything that's more complex and we'll need to use uh, numeric techniques and really um, you know for large-scale systems MATLAB or these integrators are probably the better way to go uh, for those okay so that just summarizes what we did with this species balance again we had done a mass balance previously and we're going to move on to for our next example we're going to do an energy balance